starting stream shortly. Got a new mic, so hopefully it'll be sounding better. Moving my person smaller. And if I can actually get in, I'll mute. Stop because I can't. Okay. I, so part one, started, woke up, figured out what I look like, um, oh yeah, I'm in, doing a thinker run is one of the preset options, figuring it's a good one to start with so that I learn more about the world, and then I'll probably hopefully do a psych run and last one but the, the, like there's three preset options so i'll probably go through and tell you at some point oh yeah tasks okay so so far, all I've done is mess around and not deal with the dead body that's been back up. So let's continue with that. I think I got gloves from that gardener over there. Um, so that'll be really helpful. But one of the goals is to defeat the cafeteria manager. So let's do that. And then we'll inspect the dead body. Because it's in his backyard, so he probably knows something. Oh. Who knows that? Oh yeah, there's the bird. I probably broke The man with the unimpressive beard notices you approaching. He drops the ledger he was holding and turns to the lieutenant. Mr. Gout, right? You run this place. Yes. Responds tersely. I am Kim Kitsuragi from Prison 57. This is an inter-district investigation. So joining me from Prison 41. He looks to you, realizing he still doesn't know your name. I'm gonna grab my headphones to why I started to stream without my headphones. coming through my headphones and should be working perfectly fine with desktop audio and my
and Kim Kim's garage is done. Oh yeah, Phil doesn't know his planet. I'll bring you your other one. And I'm currently in between names. Make a turn to save. The harbor in the river. What? The gloaming. I am it. I have no idea what that means. I've been to the crystal. I've seen the end. I'm an experimental. Seen the over to your mind. Doesn't matter if you understand. What is this? A joke to you? Is this what you get when you call the police now? This guy? We've been waiting for a week here. Okay, maybe I shouldn't have dropped it on so much. Sir, I understand your concern, but we are here to do a job. And for us to do it, I need you to stay calm. Yes, of course. I know it took us a while to arrive at the scene, but it also took you a while to call us. It was you who placed the call, correct? No, I only just got here. It was probably Sylvie who called you. She usually works the bar here. I'm only temporarily taking over her duties. Do you have her number? As a matter of fact, I do. He looks behind a pile of coasters, finds a slip of paper, and hands it to the lieutenant. This sounds like something you can use to call this Sylvie later. It's, yeah, it's probably a phone number. You said you just got here. From where? Are you a local? What, of Martinez? No, I live in Jamrock. I only sometimes come here to keep an eye on the place. This is just one of the many, many cafeterias I manage. Isn't the Jamrock, like, fancier? Like, a richer person. It would make sense since it manages plenty of different cafeterias. But you still know your way around, yes? In case we need directions. Yes, I know where some things are, but as I said, I don't live here. I just used to work here. And I'm not going to start working here again, if that's what you think. Used to work here. So maybe you worked his way up? I didn't imply that. Detective. He probably means this is where you step in and ask your questions. Right then, questions. I got this. His face expresses profound doubt in your having this. <laughs> I mean, kind of understandable with how I've been acting. Ask him about the body's location before asking if he killed him. People give up information in the more innocuous question, which you can later use in the more sinister ones, not vice versa. I mean... If he killed him, I doubt he would tell us, like, straight up like this, but, you know. That doesn't mean we shouldn't ask him, it just means it probably won't be helpful. Where exactly is the body? Behind this building, there's a courtyard. They hoisted him up on a tree there. And how do we get there from then? That's easy. See that door there? First you exit through that. Then, to your right, you should see a big hole in the fence. A really big one. You can get to the courtyard through there. No need for the keys. The hole is big enough for the Franco-Nigerian cavalry to fit through. This man means the heavy cavalry of the innocent Franco-Negro, sweeping over the plains and nations of the enemies of mankind, 5th century style. Unified currency and the concept of cool came in their wake. They wore lamella and carried guns. But first and foremost, Franco-Nigerian heavy cavalry was really, really wide. That hole in the fence must be enormous. This is why I like the encyclopedia. Like, was that important for the story? No. Was that interesting? Yes. 
Why did Sylvie go away? She went away because none of your business. Did I... Um... Is that a sore spot? Have they not been telling you you're a cop? She pertains to the coming apocalypse. Am I not a cop? Everything is my business. Am I not a cop? Okay, you got me. She went away because of the dead body out back. And because I asked for her number. That's why Sylvie went away. I hope you appreciate that. Mm. So, made her uncomfortable? Thank you. The lieutenant says, he opens his little notebook at the cover. The number is safely tucked away in a small box. Mystery solved or didn't go very well? I asked an employee out. She didn't want to come, but felt obliged to. It was a bad idea. Now, what is so goddamn fascinating about that for you? It's got nothing to do with the lynching. Mm, I definitely think so. This stuff gets on my nerves. I am a fem feminist. I guess I like to be thorough. Everything has something to do with it. I don't know. I just went for it. You're right. I probably shouldn't have asked. Everything has something to do with everything. Good for you. Uh, was there something else? I'd like to get back to what I was doing. Okay, now for the who killed them. I don't know who killed him. I'm not the police. That's your job. This is it. He said they hoisted him up on a tree. Who is this they if he doesn't know? It's multiple people. I mean, makes sense. I mean, old man. Kill him, or you said they hosted him up on a tree. Who do you mean by they? I have another. Okay. They. Oh, people are saying it was the union dock workers, that it was a lynching. Who exactly is saying that? The locals, the customers, the people who eat here. A lot of dock workers eat here. Sylvie told me everyone knows the dock workers did it. Did the debarders themselves tell her this, or is it a rumor? I don't really know. You'll have to ask her. Why would the dock workers lynch this man? I would suppose it's because they have nothing better to do. You mean the strike? Yes, the strike. The man they hanged was a security guard for the harbor company, I hear. A mercenary. The unionists probably thought they'd send a message. And with the strike, he makes little quotation marks with did you kill him? What are you, crazy? Of course I didn't kill him! Oh... Wait, can I ask this again? What are you, crazy? Of course I didn't kill him! Okay, it, it doesn't change the response, but... I need to know. The lieutenant turns the page in the little notebook he's been scribbling in. Okay. Well, that answers all my questions. Let's go. Ooh, booty experience. Not so fast! You owe me 130 real. I have six. Oh, excuse me. You owe me 130 real. He pr pronounces the R with a mock aristocratic. The IIR, or Interisolary Real, is the global reserve currency. Whatever part of the world you're in right now, it's safe to assume he means you owe him some money. Oh, I understand. You mean I owe you money. Wow, you're a genius. Yes, that's right. Money. You owe this establishment 130 real. He points to the red ledger on the counter. What do I owe this place for? But what exactly is money? You're under arrest. Do I owe Let's this see. Three nights at a tariff of 20 real comes to 60 real. Then there's the window you annihilated. The hole in the window was the first thing I saw when I came to work. So don't try to tell me you didn't. That will be 40 real in damages. Another thing you've annihilated is half the bar. You've run a tab of 30 real. Actually, more, but 
We'll round it down to 30 for your hard work maintaining the stability and order of Revachol. That's 60 plus 40 plus 30 equals 130 real. And yes, real is still money. What exactly is money? What are you, a philosopher? Actually, I'm Money not. is what grown-up people use to pay for things. Things like this hostel room or or eight bottles of potent blend and nine packs of royal extra. We use it for everything, really. Interesting. Where do I get it from? Why do I need it? Proceed and show him the coins you found. Is this money? Proceed, but don't show him the coins. Be yours. Interesting. Where do I get it from? Are you serious? From your work? I don't know. You can take bribes, I guess. I'm sorry. I don't think cops can take bribes. He looks at the lieutenant for that. I'll ask it. Some do take recompense, but only to survive. Why do I need it? <sighs> for survival, to pay me. Unless you want to become a hobo. Do you want to become a hobo? There's nowhere else to stay in Martinez, and it's a cold spring outside. Money doesn't make you happy, but it lets you be unhappy for a while longer. If you run out of money, you die. It's like that for all of us. Me too. That's why I need you to pay me. I'm not an asshole. <clears throat> he stops and says mostly to himself, I'm not an asshole. Is this money? Yes, it is. It's 10 plus 10 plus 20 equals 40. I'm now down to 90, right? No, you see, that's 40 cents. Cents are a form of currency 100 times smaller than the real. I'm not even going to take this. Come back when you have 130 real. 100 times smaller? Yes. But that's horrible. It is. And silently looking at the coppers on the counter. Isn't it evil? The order of magnitude between what is asked of a person and what they have? Darkness rides. It does, doesn't it? There's a shuffle of nylon as Lieutenant Kitsuragi looks for something in the pockets of his orange bomber. I'm sorry, to? but he has to pay. I can't let him stay here any longer if he doesn't. If he doesn't have the money by tonight, then... He shrugs. Officer, maybe you are better off working this from home for now. You live in Jamrock, right? It's not that far away. Isn't there somewhere else I can stay around here? I don't have a home. I don't remember where my home is. F this place, I'll take my chances on the streets. I'll see what I can do. Isn't there somewhere else I can stay around You here? mean somewhere else to run up a huge debt? I don't think so. The union squeezed most places out of business to fund the strike. You're better off home. I don't remember where my home is. Officer, you really need to take this up with your station. I have a shortwave radio in my car. Call them. Ask for assistance. We have to get this investigation started now. Good luck. Okay, so I have six dollars and need 130. By the way, where is home? The address is coming up blank, and this place sure isn't it. I really don't remember. But you've been at this hostel cafeteria for only three nights. Where were you before? You had to be somewhere. I don't know, near, south maybe, far away, up Marvel Hill. You don't really know, do you? I don't. Does this mean I'm homeless? South, maybe. Doesn't sound like somewhere you can stay if you run out of money. Did I trace the way back somehow to the exact street, the exact number on a building? You can try. Run some addresses in your head when you get the time. Maybe a street or an apartment will appear. <gasps> oh, I just got... Thought cabinet. I only opened one, so I guess I'll use that one. Uh, I could have chosen the other one and got Hobo Cop. I want to do Hobo Cop. 
Okay, so now I have to call Sylvie. Oh, and ask for money. Cool. at him. Letter R wears a crown on the ribbon below, a light above descending. Below the slope of the mythology of which Kuno's got this! He looks deranged. The boy throwing rocks at the dead body can't be older than 12. If there ever was such a thing as an ugly kid, then this is it. He's almost exquisite in his ugliness, like a gremlin. Right. Oh yeah, not a comfy Kuno! Can't talk, pig! Shit's coming up strong. Throwing rocks. Yeah, he's throwing rocks. Good job. Shit coming up strong. That sounds good. Joyous. You should hang out with this kid and see what that juicy shit is all about. She what now? I mean drugs. The kid's on drugs. Oh. Yeah, Kuno! Ride the lightning, Kuno! Kuno's riding it, see? He wipes sweat from his brow and sends another rock flying. The rake, Kuno! He should throw the rake at him, Kuno! The fuck? Does Kuno know what a rake is? Kuno is not a gardener. Sam, what should we do? Are you kids siblings? Kid, you want to hang out? I'm not an arc. Look, I have questions for you. All right. Entertain the Kuno. Show me what you got. What you got there? What you got, huh? Show me what you got. The kid moves his hands like a basketball player dribbling fast. Body, what do you know about it? About the crime scene you kids often play in this yard? I'd ask who is Kuno. I think that kid's Kuno. Body, what do you know about it? Shitload pig. What's your question? Don't tell the pig shit, Kuno. This is where you quickly ask him questions. Real cop questions. Like a cop. You know who he was? Kuno's fucking. Kuno uses the fucking for target practice. He's trying to hide the fact that he doesn't know. I mean, who uh, he was before he died. Kuno knows what you meant. Kuno's not a snitch. That's all. Trying to make Kuno sing into the popo phone. Takes his head, clearly offended. You know how it got Probably up climbed. Kuno was busy down the road when that shit went down. So you didn't see it happening? You heard Kuno. Kuno wasn't even in Martinez. Kuno wasn't in Revachol. Kuno wasn't regional. Oh, okay. Where did you go then? I don't know. Some fucking... Looks around, trying to come up with something. Mesk or... or I don't know. Some other place. Night City. Kuno was in fucking Night City. There is no Night City anywhere. That sounds like the name of a city in some pulp science fiction novel. Okay, about the dead yeah. body. Kuno didn't smoke him, if that's what you mean. He draws snot up his nose. Thanks, Kuno. That's one name you can now cross off the list. Have you seen anyone suspicious around? Just a couple of pigs sniffing around in the dirt. That seems pretty fucking suspicious to Kuno. Yeah, you tell the faggoty Kuno! 
on this later. Right now, let's talk about something else. You're testing Kuno's patience, yeah? Get lost! Oh, that's fun. About the t crime scene. You kids often play in this yard? Right, pig. This is where Kuno plays with his little wooden choo-choo. What do you want with it? Might have questions later. For now, let's talk about something else. Yeah, whatever. Kuno doesn't give a shit. He spits over his shoulder, then looks back up to you. I gotta ask, who is Kuno? Kuno's Kuno, pig? The boy points out to his chest with both thumbs. It's always Kuno, never I. Clearly, the kid's using the third-person perspective as a shield. Interesting. You refer to yourself in the third person to distance yourself from the situation? Kuno doesn't do that smart shit. Don't throw that book shit at Kuno. Kuno knows you're lying. Seems offended. Trying to get Kuno hooked on the book. Watch out, Kuno! He's trying to fiddle you! He's gonna put his hands on you! The thing behind the fence starts squealing, shrill and violent like a fire alarm. Help! Pigs for Kuno! Help! Rape! The sound gets louder as the child shouts at the windows overlooking the yard. Help! He's got the Kuno! Help! Everyone can hear. You need to get the hell out of here before. Just answer the questions. Help! He's digging his dick out! Escalate, Kuno! His dick is out! You're afraid! Pigs in there in Kuno! Somebody, please! Full blast now. The wind carries the message far and wide apart. How did we get here? How did this happen? This makes no sense. There may still be a way out. Just appeal to his reason. Be logical, kid. I haven't done anything to you. Fucking logical! <laughs> Help! The logical pig is fiddling Kuno! What is the sixth trade? No! <laughs> Get up, Kuno, you sick fat fuck! The nearly psychopathic way they can slip in and out of the act implies you're not the first victim. Are you high right now? Help! Misters, help! Prances around, eyes bulging out of their sockets, rolling hard, yelling at the windows. He's flashing, Kuno! He's showing his genitals! If you don't help Kuno now, it'll be too late! Put you up to this? No one. Kuno's doing this because he likes it, pig. Help! The pig's gagging him! Kuno can't speak! Someone put you up to this. You put him up to this yourself when you decided to talk to him in the first place. Yeah. Listen to your friend. <laughs> you know, hawks a loogie on the ground. The it's yellowish and bubbling somehow. Did Gart put you up to this? And did you do this? Okay, no one put you up to this. Help! <laughs> the RCM is trying to fuck Kuno in the ass. Tears of joy mixed with sweat, smelling of laundry detergent on his face. No, let's not punch the kid. Look! You know whispers, even softer than before, vanishingly silent. For emphasis, a ghost is saying this. A shit-eating psychopathic ghost with an ace up his sleeve. I know you wanted to hit me. You got that, I'm gonna fuck that Kuno up look that Kuno's dad gets. The murder look. The rage look. Relax. He can't read your mind. He doesn't know you were thinking that. I think he knows because he has that effect on him. There's a dead body, remember? That's what you were doing here. You're a cop on a case. Why don't we get back to the interview, Kuno? I know what you thought. I'm gonna fuck that Kuno up. I'm gonna shut that shit down. You know what? You should've, because now... He raises his voice again. You're nothing! Get a joke to Kuno! Kuno laughs at you! King Kuno! Kuno turned you into his prison, bitch! You're gonna be in this shit with Kuno! No, you're not. We can just leave. Bitch, you're gonna be in this shit with Kuno forever! 
Peepo headed critter doesn't let him finish. A peepo is a type of hat, by the way. <laughs> nice peepo. You don't talk to me about my fucking peepo. You don't know where I come from. You just two nose bottom bitch. Whatever. I had some questions about the crime scene. Okay. Kuno is kind to his bitch. Ask your questions, but remember, this changes shit. Taps it. This temporal lobe. Click, 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 click! Kuno doesn't fucking care. Okay. The corpse looks at you with bulging white eyes. The face around them does not look human. It's swollen and ready to burst. His lips are fish-like and his tongue like a ball gag in his mouth. You seem to be holding your breath. A cargo belt twists his neck at an unnatural angle. The body below appears stiff. It's letting out an ungodly rot. The smell seeps in even through your clenched nostrils. What is that? Why is it so bad? It's been rotting for like a week. Active decay. He took it to throw up of his own. No one is judging. The lieutenant raises a white piece of linen to his nose. I've gotten something like that. He's about to blow! Cock's gonna blow, Kuno! Ladder is rickety, but still climbable. Ladders for kids, it wouldn't hold the weight of a grown man. And a girl burps in the Mechanism has been fixed for some reason. Anyway, I can get a little bit of something good smelling to like stick under my nose or something. <sighs> it's like a smelled boiled meat and curdled dairy. Human being. Okay, I guess I'm just going there, to... There, he still is, looking right through you, with his white eyes. The body below is entirely dedicated to that corpse smell. Emitting it is all it does now. Above your nose without throwing up. The smell is repulsive. It pushes in from your mouth, more instant and more familiar than anything you expected. More fever than odor. It fills your mind, flushing you from within. Try to walk away. Too late. It's impossible to keep in. Your body curls and pushes it out. Burst by burst. Oops. Until a pool of vomit lies under your feet and your throat stings from the stomach acid. The smell of Commodore Red rises from the pool. Among it, distilled spirit and bits of shish kebab. Ew. It's okay. Happens to everyone. Keep it. The lieutenant hands you his white tincture. The hangover is clearly making this worse for you. You could use some ammonia to clear your head. Okay, where do we get ammonia from? There's the frit nearby. Maybe they have some in the apothecary. If they don't... Point to the greenhouse. There's a greenhouse here, and a gardener with a wheelbarrow on the corner of the whirling in rags. If she works here, she might have something for the smell. Hmm. Pretty clever. Acquiring ammonia will provide a modifier to the white check. Modifiers make checks easier and allow you to retry them. Okay, so I probably should have done that first before, well, whatever.
can't believe it's snowing again. The young woman watches the falling snow and sighs. It felt like springtime just a few days ago. My partner told me you may have some ammonia. Can I have some? Sure. I'm done with it. She takes a small capsule out of her breast pocket and hands it to you. Go easy on that stuff. It gave me a terrible headache. In glass tube wrapped in cotton napkin. Use tree repentance spells for fiery and Saint Bartiste pharmaceutical. There, he still is, looking right through you with his white eyes. The body below is entirely dedicated to that corpse smell. Emitting it is all it does now. I may have to try it a couple times. The ammonia only makes it worse. The combination forces tears out of your ducts. You manage to keep it in once. The second time, not so much. When the vomiting is done, your cheeks are wet with tears. Ammonia didn't Now does the wind right now. You feel the lieutenant pat your back right in his clothes. I've seen strong men turn themselves inside out for hours. You are facing tough odds here. Alcohol withdrawal makes it considerably harder. Why can't I keep in if I've been a cop my whole life? I've seen captains puke their guts out. It never gets easier. You never get used to the smell. Every Monday is cadaver day. Throw up, investigate. Throw up, initial autopsy. Throw up, baguette. That's your back again. Then drive to the station. Maybe throw up on the way there if you didn't bag the thing tight enough. It seemed to be fine. I think I've lost my sense of smell. There's a pause. A white lie. So oh, nice. Not being hungover helps too. I don't want to be a cop. Okay, you've said it. You needed to say it. And now that you have. He withdraws his hand from your back and looks at you in the eye. You need to get your shit together. I don't want to get my shit together. Then the world will turn away from you and leave you behind. Okay. We should go talk to the locals. Find something else to do while the wind changes. It's pretty bad right now. You've gained a thought. When this dialogue is over, go to your thought cabinet and internalize it for special bonuses and effects. Give it half an hour. Get yourself together. Then come back and have another go. Volumetrics. Fantastic. Okay, so now I have to run around. We can do that while I've been doing it. So let's get more stuff. And 
Screenshots like that. This is a wall on the side of an apartment building. Why am I looking at this wall? Probably would be good for a graffiti. You have no clue. It's just a wall. So many walls all over Martinez, weather-worn, cracked, their paint peeling. standing behind her back logic error she is not sleeping right now <clears throat> thank you logic pigs come to take me out trying to snuff me out now why would you even say that then why are you sneaking up on me like that it's not a good idea to scare me pig not a good idea at all Garden hoses won't be of use until the snow melts. There's some tables eaten Can't by rain. Can't get involved in this. Another spattering of bullet holes. This one. Feeny with a couple of big assholes on the side. It looks like it may have been used as mask during an armed robbery. Like, let's have, I don't, probably don't need the encyclopedia boost, but I'm not sure. I like having more money. So. Closed door, but you look at it suspiciously. Barrels are half full of rainwater. So much for a quiet smoke. Happening with a view to the yard and the hanging. The streets will flow red once more. A great torrent rushing down Rue de Esperance. You wait and see. The girl stares at the sailboat by the pier. The streets will not flow red with anything. Who are you? Well, I mean, it looks like there's paint. Like, running red. There. I'm Cindy the fucking skull. What else do you want to know? Date of birth, blood type. The last time I was tested for Hep C. Just want to know your name. No need to get offensive. Don't use that tone with me. I am the law. Start with your blood type and go from there. Get Hep. Yeah. When were you last tested? Answer some questions. Like that. Start with your blood. Go type. where? Accosting a minor? Listen to your partner, pig man. Keep your grubby hooves off little old ladies. Despite the attitude, she puts the brush aside. 
keep looking off to the side. What are you looking at? What are you doing to the wall? Do you know anything about the research? Looking off the, the lieutenant side. furrows his brow at another one of your eccentricisms. Nods disdainfully toward the woman performing maintenance on the boat dock next to Hatred? Disgust? It's difficult to tell which of the two is more present in her girlish features. The woman on the boat does not notice her staring. That Ozon her. Someone's got to keep an eye on her. Ozon is an archipelago, two days travel away from Rivershot. Its moneyed residents used to posh restaurants and upscale boutiques, rarely have reason to visit Martinez. Probably the Wild Pines rep. We should talk to her. She's a professional negotiator, though. I have the feeling she will be very cooperative while telling us nothing. You should take the lead. Ask her unexpected questions, you know? Do your thing. Don't be afraid to get a bit wacky. Throwing her off is our best bet. Great. Good idea, piggies. Run along now. Fuck her shit up good. Impound that boat while you're at it. I'd like to watch her swim back to Ozon. You doing to the wall? Can't you tell? I'm painting a beautiful mural, an aereo graffitio visible from low orbit. I haven't really started it yet. I'm waiting for the right words. She studies the wall, suddenly pensive. You didn't know what to write? Have you ever tried your hand at graffitio? When faced with a blank wall, most people write unimaginative stuff, like pigs go home and Mono is here. We rarely see pigs around here, though. Just union cabs. And my name's not Mona, so... Why are you so committed to defacing the building? This place is severely lacking in havoc. Not even the occasional trash can fire to break up the tedium. I thought I'd mix it up, you know. Summon the forces of crime and social chaos with a wall-sized invitation. I like it. I have an opinion on this. Want to hear it? Yeah. I love public art. Don't mind us. Keep doing what you're doing. Thanks. I'm sure the inspiration will come to me now that I have an official RCM stamp of approval. She means the opposite. Do you know anything about the recent murder? I ain't no snitch, Pigstein. Go forth and forage in someone else's shit. No shortage of squealers in these parts. Actually, there is a shortage of people who talk to us in a normal, calm, informative manner. We weren't put on this earth to make your life pleasant, fucko. Catch you later, Cindy. Watch your back, Ungular. You've got eyes on you. That's great. Me too. Okay, so let's go see what the video is. Okay. Like there was more construction here one step. Belly of this boat shines like it was recently painted. Parking reserves for residents of Peru, Dostum. The room in the whirling world isn't that much goes clear than sleep. It's worth more than you'll ever earn in all your life. A striking woman leans against the cabin top of her sailing boat, smiling as you approach. Her green raincoat glistens with droplets. A silk scarf is tied around her throat. Good afternoon, officers. I'm Joyce. She extends her hand in greeting. 
Joyce L. Messier. I represent the board of Wild Pines, the owners of the harbor. You gentlemen must be from the RCM. Chris steps closer and holds out her hand over the railing. Joyce L., what does the L stand for? What exactly is the RCM? I remember hearing it from Smart. Dude, that's what you are. What gave us away? Shake her hand. Don't shake her hand. Joyce L., what does the L stand for? Baton, my maiden name. Her bony hand dangles from the sleeve of her oversized raincoat. What gave us away? Nothing, honestly. I've said it to every drunk in town, and you're the first one who's responded. Relax. She meant it in jest. What exactly is the RCM? Um, I meant you. The Revachol Citizens Militia. The police. Shake her I'm hand. I'm glad to see you here. Her grip is tight and cold. Like steel. There is strength there. If she wanted, she could sink her nails deep into your skin. I was dispatched to handle a strike, not a lynching. Anything I can do to assist the RCM in this matter, I will, gladly. That is good to hear, madame. My colleague will take the lead on this interview. I should let you know that he is recovering from an unusual medical episode. Very unusual. But I can assure you of his ultimate competency. Yep, uh, you can definitely assure her of that. Doesn't mean it's true. There's a trace of irony in his voice. Mischief, even. This is a tactic. <sighs> this will be fun. It happens quicker than a shooting star. But did the lieutenant just wink at you? <laughs> How interesting. I wish you a swift face. recovery. In the meanwhile, you have my full cooperation and the full cooperation of the Wild Pines group. You're on a boat. Why, yes, I am. She looks at the deck under her feet. Green and white sails flutter overhead. Not a lot of people on boats, are there? Of course there are. We're on an archipelago. How else are you supposed to get around? Wait, we're in an archipelago? Look around. Yes, we are. We are on Le Caillou. Technically, the neighboring Ozone and Fas Alamer island groups are archipelagos, while Le Caillou, by contrast, is a single fertile landmass, the fourth largest island in the world. It is not an archipelago. Wait, I thought Le Caillou was one big island. Okay. If you want to get technical, the point is we're all on islands here, and sail is still the most expedient way to get from one island to another, especially when you're in a hurry to resolve a strike. So, I haven't seen anyone else sail a boat around here. I haven't seen anyone else drive a souped up Kupri Kenema motor carriage either. Actually, that motor carriage has been specially issued to serve as a patrol and pursuit vehicle. It's for crossing long distances in the Greater Revachol Industrial Harbor. It's not a toy. Neither is this. A toy, I mean. It's a machine for crossing long distances in the Bay of Revachol, between the city and the islands. You need to make this lady admit she's only riding around on this boat because she's rich. <laughs> um, why? Why what? Stop thinking. Take her down. It'll come off like I'm envious, and I'm not. You're not? Okay, then. Just keep on admiring the boat, then. Unburdened by envy. Okay, yeah, I kind of want to get her on it. Does she have a name? The boat? No. It is called Cordelati 19, because that's the type of sloop it is. Okay, but what kind of boat is it? It's a pleasure craft. A 19 pacer. It also happens to be rated for Category 1 Racing. Though these days, I mainly use it for business. How do you like My it? My sloop? I like it a lot. It's the eel's hips, baby. <laughs> Why do I think that's an outdated, like, bee's knees type thing? I'm enjoying this part of the interview. It has so little to do with the murder we're investigating. Well, you wanted me to throw her off. Do you have a license for Officer, this boat? 
I assure you, I'm a highly qualified pleasure craft operator. The crowns of her teeth are puzzling, white as the boat's hull as she smiles. Her nonchalance might be related to something called the Wayfarer Act, a law that says she doesn't need a license. Sly Fox, you're not aggressive enough to harass her further on this. I think I have a handle on the boat. Good. Some rich can I have some money? Um, tell me about Wild Pines. What do you do? What we do? I'm afraid I don't speak for Wild Pines as a whole. It, it's a giant undertaking. There was a touch of discomfort there. She wants to merely represent. What do they do? The Pines' core competency is logistics. Container shipping, freight, that sort of thing. See those airships there, blinking? Those are the shipping side of things. And that is the terminal. Another subdivision deals with energy, oil and gas exploration, offshore platforms. The Wild Pines Group is one of the original Revisholian Indo tribes. Companies awarded royal monopolies by the king, the suzerain himself, centuries ago. The king is long gone, but several of the Indo tribes remain. Son Baptiste, L-U-M, an unknown entity known as Brightest Star. Why, thank you. She does not register the real meaning of her mouth. How much money does Wild Pines have? I'm not at liberty to discuss the company balance sheet, but I can tell you that last year, the company booked more than 20 billion real in revenue. The money I owe is so much less than that. Yes, past a certain point, numbers begin to seem imaginary. But they are quite real for the 72,000 employees who depend on Wild Pines for their paychecks. A conglomerate the size of Wild Pines is like a shark. If it stops moving and growing, it will die. Then what becomes of those 72,000 families? It is a tremendous responsibility. Where does Wild Pines get all those billions? They started as an exploration and cargo fleet conducting trade between the Samaran and Insulindian Easterlers 250 years ago, when pine ships explored the South Seminese and charted Lormantang on behalf of the suzerain. Centuries of care, deliberation, and madness have gone into this endeavor. Vessels pass through the great unrest to re-emerge with apricots in tow. The logic of the system is totalizing. It's taken everything from its employees to build it. Probably helps to start off with the royal monopoly. You know more than you let on. Takes Certainly it helped, but most of the original Indo tribes have failed. Or been absorbed. To survive, Wild Pines had to grow and adapt. No suzerain did that. What does such a huge system want with a place like this? You mean aside from being the terminal's legal owners, who are responsible for moving 8% of the world's cargo? She gives you a little smile. Eight percent of all cargo in the world? That's quite the endeavor indeed. There are no minor cogs in the system. Each terminal must be accounted for, lest the entire system break. Every hiccup in such a system means thousands lose their jobs, the world over. I'm here to assure that doesn't happen. Can you tell me about the strike? Everything. Right up to, but not including, trade secrets. Wait, what if I want to hear about trade First, secrets? First, you'd have to repeal the Emergencies Act of Trade and Elements. That gives me the right to silence. It's quite the octopus. The octopus. The octopus that straddles Revachon. The Emergencies Act is the cornerstone of post-war Revachon, inseparable from the world it created. An octopus, I will slay it. How do I repeal it then? When one or disturb an octopus, better let it be. Why? By throwing off half a century of foreign domination under the coalition. 
Unfortunately for you, the Coalition also leases you the right to police the West Revachol. You'd be shooting yourself in the foot, in other words. But I am derailing us. You wanted to know about the strike. What is your role in this precisely? I believe the official title is Senior Labour Negotiator. In practice, I'm a grocery clerk. I relay the Union's demands to Wild Pines and return with Wild Pines' counteroffer. And how are the talks going? They're not. That's the problem. The Union stopped all negotiations a week ago, after that awful lynching took place. Wait. She just admitted that the lynching and the strike are connected. Now they won't even let me into the harbour. There's a 2 meter 20 racist behemoth blocking the gates. So the strike is connected to the lynching? Yes, I believe there is a connection. But that's a subject for later. Tell us more about this book. What can I say? The Union employs a giant covered in tattoos. A racist giant. I guess that's part of their big tent organization now. How are the talks going before the lynching? Let's say I was not making the kind of progress I'd hoped for when I first arrived. And when did you first arrive? I arrived three weeks ago. Yes, in the middle of February. The bay was still partially frozen then. I prefer to do these things on site, like the RCM. But the strike began in December. He looks at his notes. I wasn't the original negotiator here. I took over after Mr. Gaumont hit a wall with Mr. Clare, the union boss. Mr. Clare refused to speak with Gaumont despite concessions he'd granted the union in prior negotiations. This isn't the first time the union has gone on strike? Heavens no. There have been two prior strikes. Both times the union won significant concessions, including overtime pay and a medical plan. This time their demands are more, I guess you could say, aggressive. Yeah, because overtime pay and medical plan is, like, good, useful stuff. Ludicrous, even. It's meant. What are their demands? There are leaflets everywhere, and banners. What did they say again? Oh, yes. Every worker, a member of the board. Wanting to get some say in what's happening. Most of the workers probably don't know what that means. Don't know what to think of that. Fortunately, they explained it. Every time the Wild Pines group makes a decision about anything, it needs the signature of each of the 2,200 workers in its Martinez terminal. Interesting. Just so you understand, this is but one of 22 terminals owned by Wild Pines. Essentially, not only are they kings of the company, they are also kings of the 72,000 employees of Wild Pines group. That's pretty funny, I have to admit. Yeah. They're having a blast. But how can they afford it? After four months, my assumption was they would prefer a more practical solution. What are you going to do? I'm not sure. Naturally, I assume that was just their opening position. A hard-nosed tactic with a side of mockery. But there's been no follow-up, just the same nonsensical slogan repeated over and over again. And now, people are getting lynched, I hear behind the whirling in rags. A disastrous situation if there ever was one. Excuse me, from whom did you hear about this lynching? I first heard it from the boyer at the gates. The one whose very name advertises his aversion to work. I think he said it was, call me manana. This checks out. What happened to this Gamont? Mr. Clare told him to, how did he put it? She pauses to compose herself. Fuck off, midget. Go Monty's short of stature, you see. Hmm, okay then. Yes. Keep in mind, this is a negotiator Mr. Clare has worked with before, and who was more than fair with him and the Union. The scabs at the gate, did you put them there? The scabs? You mean the huddled masses of Jamrock come to plead for work where the Union refuses to? Don't let her answer it herself. No, I mean scabs. Let's call them strike bakers. You put them there, right? Right, I don't know what got into me. Some of the degenerate dock worker lingo is rubbed off, it seems. 
Let's call them strike breakers. You put them there, right? If these strike breakers were organized by Wild Pines or its affiliates, then it would be a company secret. I could not share it with you. Not yet, at least. That's not a no. It's implied. She's open to discussing this matter with you at a later occasion. Tell me about this union boss, Mr. Clare. Everard Clare is a man of the utmost integrity. If you can say one thing about him, it's that he always puts the interests of the workers first. Really? Of course not. Everard is fantastically corrupt. I imagine he has a thick, viscous goo where you and I have blood. If you were to prick it with something sharp, you could see it oozing out. A knife, maybe? No, a rapier. Sound like you're about to take a rapier. Oh, heavens no. We get along just fine. Yet, yeah, now that you mention it, I can't stop imagining that black treacle just dribbling down his double chin. She stops and smiles. Is he that bad? He is the most corrupt individual I have ever seen, and I deal with men like him for a living. If there is anyone more venal, more irredeemably nepotistic, then it's his twin brother, Edgar. Wait, there are two of him? Yes. Edgar looks exactly like his brother, except for that lazy eye. He also talks exactly like Everard does, and when one's term as foreman is up, the other takes over. It's how they circumvent the term limits, you see, with a funny little switcheroo. While in office, they've embezzled God knows how much of their workers' dues. What about the union itself, outside of the Brothers Clare? The Day Bardeurs Union was once a perfectly normal institution. Twenty years ago, anyway. It must not have been easy to establish under the Emergency Act. But they did it. I can respect that. Organized labor at its best, as they say. Then something happened in the local chapter elections. The Brothers Clare came and transformed it into a... How do you say? She hesitates, looking for the right expression. A mob. The Debardeurs are a crime syndicate. Sad as it may be, I suspect we'll be forced to cooperate with them. Refreshingly honest, officer. The company has tried appeasing in the past, but I'm afraid our concessions have only emboldened Everard and his brother. She turns to you. And your opinion, detective, if I may ask. I'm a curious and talkative person, you see. Would you say the Day Bardeurs Union is... An effective advocate for the rights of local workmen. Then leech sucking the life out of Repshaw. Basically a socialist mod. I prefer not to have an opinion on these things. Units in general are good, but... One may not be, but then also it's from her perspective. And she kind of has like a stake in it. I don't know, I don't have enough information yet. Of course, officer. One more thing, you said something happened in the elections. I'm glad you asked. There was a woman, the previous forewoman of the union. She disappeared. What happened to her? Disappeared? Yes. On the last day of the local chapter elections, her daughter phoned in and said she wasn't running anymore. Or coming to work. Ever. End of story. Oh, she's okay. This forewoman, her name? Sadly, the company records do not even give a name. She's just forewoman in private correspondence, Polly. I don't even know if it's a sir or given name, and I don't have access to the union's files. Eerie. Downright haunting, if you ask me. The Wild Pines suspected foul play, but what could they do? It was a union matter. The point of the presentation is, these kinds of things happen around the Clares. Watch out when you're dealing with him. Thank you for your concern, ma'am. We'll be just fine. That's all I need here. Let's change the topic. Of course. How else can I help? What can you tell me about this lunch? Quite a few things, I'm afraid. She falls silent for a moment, contemplating something. The information I'm to share with you includes sensitive trade secrets. For the sake of my employer, I have to ask for your names and badge numbers.
Of course, ma'am. We should have introduced ourselves. I am Lieutenant Kitsuragi from Precinct 57. And this is my colleague from Precinct 41. I'm afraid he doesn't have his badge at the moment. I hope mine will suffice. How curious. Why is that, Detective? Remember when my partner told you I'd recently suffered from an unusual medical episode? My lost badge is related to it. I see. So, are you saying you lost your badge during the course of this episode? I could have eaten it for all I know. I don't remember anything. This world, this city, nothing. Oh dear. Hmm. Some kind of encephalopathic amnesia. I don't even know how to respond. I do believe you, naive as that may sound. I simply can't imagine what you gain by faking such a condition. As I said, ma'am, his technique may be very unconventional, but he is an officer of the RCM. Of course, I sympathize, but I'm afraid I simply can't share anything more until I've seen that badge. Ugh. She's a professional negotiator. She should be open to some sort of mutually beneficial arrangement. Can't be retried, but let's go. Feelings will guide the way. Damn, I need to know about this lynching. It's very important to me. It's the case I'm solving. I assure you, it is no small matter for me either. We all share the responsibility for disarming this situation. I hope you have a badge for me as soon as possible. You have so much else. I have only this. Spread your hands. This is the entirety of my existence. She's silent. The wind flaps the sail above her. This boat, for example, in a home somewhere, I only have this case. Officer. I don't remember anything except this lynching. There is only this coast and this lynching. You know, I don't mean to sound cold, but if you want something, you have to give something back. More than just guilt. You're doing it. Despite your own best efforts, you're still getting it. Somehow. I'll be frank with you. If I'm going to break protocol, I need to be able to justify it to my superiors. They're going to want to see something tangible. Like what? The Union is conducting drug trade out of the harbor. It's an open secret in Martinez. Surely it must not come as a complete surprise to the RCM either. Perhaps it's time to look into it. Or you can find your badge, which honestly seems like a lost cause. Detective. A word in private before we continue. This is from a woman. Volumetric ship compressor. Bizarre scientific news from Rivershall West today, where a police officer's shit has been observed at a pressure of around 495 gigadecimals. These metallic hydrogen levels of shit togetherness were thought to exist only at the center of collapsing stars, not law officials. It remains to be seen how long the shit's singularity lasts. Endurance white checks unlocked. Learning cap for endurance raised to four. Did you hope it would go? Honestly, I was expecting you to use your unorthodox technique to keep her off balance and, you know, not volunteer us to be her henchman. Oh, so are you her henchman now? This woman is running circles around us. She might have known about your misplaced badge all along, or she's simply an adept improviser. Either way, we've played straight into her hands. Maybe this is all her plan. She might have heard about you. company must have more ears on the ground. She could have known about my condition. I wouldn't go that far. Her reaction did come out as sincere to me. I think she's just quick to adapt. She's a professional, after all. But do you propose that we don't investigate the draft? No. Draft? If there is reasonable suspicion, we must investigate. Otherwise, she could claim we are siding with the Union, or that we are on their take. 
We'd never hear the end of it. What I propose is, we ask her, then we investigate, briefly. But do not share the outcome of this investigation with her. We tell her it's done, and demand for her information on the lynching. We could just, you know, find my badge. Oh, that would be fantastic, but do we have the time? The world is large, and your badge is 8 by 6 centimeters. <laughs> the situation might have changed drastically by the time you locate it. Time is of the essence. You could request a new one from the station, but that would literally take months. You're back? Good. What can I help you with? You seem rich. Can I have some money? It's what you want to say, but it isn't that easy, is it? Wait, why not? Look at that lady. Take a gander. Squint your eyes, bub. What nice fabric. Why, yes. Tucked away under that sturdy green raincoat, almost rustic in its simplicity. A silk shirt and matching scarf around her gentle throat. While dull orange pearls hang from her earlobes, red from the cold. Her light green eyes scan you, full of knowledge and worry. Wealth and all its possibilities. These are the kind eyes of the rich man that seem to say everything is possible. Within reason. Yeah, so? Now look at you. You misery-clad simian. Barely able to tie your own laces. Your armpits are lakes. A scythe of booze precedes you. Your hair sticks to your forehead and your underwear feels uncomfortable. You're poor. Poor as balls. You can't ask this person for money. You're too... working man. I'm not ashamed to ask this leech for some dough. You think your little communism protects you from this feeling? No. The more demeaning it is to grovel at her feet. As I was saying, if there's any way I may be of assistance, please don't hesitate to ask. Of course, detective. Take care. Okay. I believe I'm going to have to save and but for now because I need Back on later. Thanks for watching.